I eat in a day. Office edition. We usually have plenty of breakfast options, so I went to the pantry for some cereal. And what do I find? Not cereal. So I turned around and I was like, okay, fine, I'll eat a banana. And then jump scare. Bananas are already a sus ass fruit. So when I look at them and they're brown like this, I just, I don't want it anymore. So I decided for breakfast, I would have four Kit Kats. And to make up for all the sugar that I was a eating, terrible I was swap. just gonna not put sugar in my coffee. So I set up my cup and I make an iced Americano, which I take back to my desk with me with my four Kit Kats. Let he started his day fiend and for his carb favorite cereal. And he couldn't find his go-to cereal. He declined to have a piece of fruit, a little brown on a banana never hurt anybody, and he decides to make a terrible swap. Instead of having uh, some fruit, he has four pieces of candy. But thankfully, oh, I'm so glad to hear it, he's not gonna add any sugar to his espresso. Phew. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Achidi and I'm both a food educator and personal trainer who's all about keeping health and fitness simple. My goal is to give you a common sense education on how to get healthy, stay active, ultimately lead a balanced lifestyle without any of the BS fads or making things confusing and stressful for you. In today's video, we're diving into a very important topic, the standard American diet. I'll be breaking down just what the standard American diet is, why it's so detrimental to your overall health, and I'll even provide a few examples of what the standard American diet looks like for the average person, and it will actually surprise and shock you just how easy it is to eat unhealthy without realizing it. Before we jump in, don't forget to hit that like button, and if you're not doing so already, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. You don't want to miss out on my weekly videos. Also, I send out a free weekly email newsletter that is packed full of practical tips and information. And if you want to get in on that, I have the link to sign up in the description to the video. Give that a click and get signed up. All right, let's get right into it. So just what is the standard American diet? Let's break it down. I got a chart for you. When you first look at this chart, what's going to immediately jump out to you is that giant section. A little more than half, about 55% of what most of us Americans eat is processed foods. That's going to be packaged snacks, sugary drinks, frozen meals, and everyone's big favorite, fast food. This is all stuff that's easy, convenient, cheap to make, but unfortunately it's packed with artificial ingredients, unhealthy fats, and way, I mean way too much sugar. So continuing to eat a bunch of that stuff is gonna cause problems with weight gain being the first, but not the only one. The second largest section are animal products. About 30% of what most Americans eat comes from animals. Those are your meats, those are your cheeses, your eggs, and other dairy products. Now, overall, animal products aren't the problem. In fact, you should get a good portion of your proteins from animal products. The issue, though, is how we overconsume red meats and processed meat products like sausages, bacon, hot dog, those kinds of things. And having way too much red meat and processed meats, not enough fiber, leads to problems inside of the body. If you are lacking in the two smallest sections being vegetables, fruit, beans, and whole grains, I assure you, you are going to have terrible health, you're going to possibly be more overweight than you desire, and your quality of life is going to suck even though you're eating plenty of food. Now, I know this can sound both alarming and a bit of like a buzzkill, and I assure you it's not all bad news. I'm going to show you a few examples of some typical Americans eating what they eat in a day, and I'll show you some of the good things they're doing and also where they're missing the mark because they're falling into this standard American diet. And by the end of this video, you'll both understand how you are potentially making some errors in judgment when it comes to your food, but I'll also give you suggestions on what to do better so you can improve your health while still eating the food you enjoy. So buckle up, let's move on to the first video. First up, we have a young lady showing just a generalized example of what the standard American diet looks like. I don't believe this is how she personally eats each day, but she is putting herself through the paces of eating in a manner similar to that chart that I just showed. So I'll let the video play through and then I'll give my breakdown of what she eats.
Eating the standard American diet. Breakfast was cereal and Pop-Tarts. I love sugar, but this was too much. Then I had pizza and sadly I had to leave the cheese on. For snacks, I had chips and mini donuts. For dinner, I was craving a salad for the first time in my life, but I had to eat steak and mac and cheese. Dessert was ice cream. All right, you saw all that, didn't you? What stuck out the most to you? Put it in the comments below. I'd be very curious to see what you noticed about what she ate. So let's go back and look at those meals. Eating the standard American diet. Breakfast was cereal. Breakfast, carbs on carbs with a little bit of fat being the milk that she adds to her cereal. But there's zero, not necessarily zero protein in it, but very little protein. So she's going to be hungry again not too long after. And pop tarts. I love sugar, but this was too much. Then I had pizza. Lunch. Again, more carbs and fat. That looks like a cafeteria pizza from like school or a frozen pizza. Either way, it's high in empty calories, lots of carbs and sugar, but very much a negligible amount of protein. In fact, if you look up here, it says 90% of us Americans don't eat a single piece of fruit in a given day. Type a one in the comments if you've at least eaten one piece of fruit by the time you watch this video. I hope I see a good number of ones. Then sadly, I had to leave the cheese on for snacks. Next up, she's snacking on more carbs, potato chips, high in salt, high in carbohydrates, low in nutrients. So she's going to be even hungrier after that. Made chips and mini donuts. Another snack, high carbs, high fat, almost no protein. Oh, there's a cat. Anywho, so that's a, that's a snack many of us have, that little three pack of donuts. Chocolate is better than powdered donuts, in my opinion, it's less messy. But again, very low protein, high calorie food that she's eating without realizing that she's taking in a ton of calories and she's gonna be hungry still after. For dinner, I was craving a salad for the first time. Look at that unimpressive, shitty looking frozen dinner. Mac and cheese, ugh. For the record, I do not like mac and cheese of any kind. I just don't have the taste buds for it. And even if I did like mac and cheese, that version looks absolutely horrendous. And what is that, meatloaf, Salisbury steak? I don't know, but a frozen dinner, while convenient, and yes, there's finally some protein on her plate, it comes high in preservatives, oils, salt. It's just basically a high calorie bomb that again, doesn't provide much satisfaction for her hunger. So her final meal of the day, what is it? I had to eat steak and mac and cheese. It's gonna Dessert be with ice cream, chocolate ice cream at that. It's a good thing that she has it in a small bowl, but look at this total calorie count. She didn't eat that much food. I know a lot of us that say, I don't eat much food because you're thinking about the size of your meals and not the total calories. Notice if you go back and look at what she ate, it wasn't a ton of volume. None of the food she was eating occupied much space in her stomach, yet she still continued to consume more and more food. That's the biggest issue with this diet, is you're taking in empty calories, empty being that they don't register much for your hunger. If there was more protein, she would feel more full. If there was more food volume, like if she had more fruits and vegetables, she would be more full. Unfortunately, she lacked protein, lacked fruits and vegetables, but she still had over 3,600 calories, so she took in a lot of energy, but didn't feel like she ate that much, hence why she kept snacking and having dessert throughout the day. So if any of this looks familiar to you, it's time to really assess what you're putting into your body and start making some changes. Adding in more fruits and vegetables and having less of the processed foods is going to help you feel better while you're eating more food volume and taking in less calories. We're just getting started. Hit the like button and let's go to our second video example of the standard American diet. Here we are with our second video example of the standard American diet. This time we have a visitor from the UK that is here in America with family and she's highlighting just what she eats during her travels. I want you to take notice as I play the video all the way through and comment below what you notice her food choices look like on this day of eating. We're gonna break down what she eats after it's done. What I ate in a day. My nephew was cooking waffles for everybody, so I took still one. Still feeling peckish, so I had the croissant. Was still feeling peckish, so I had these lovely crab roe flavored sunflower seeds. Then I reviewed the US Cadbury's versus UK Cadbury's with you guys, and the video's up already. It was kind of a non stop morning of eating, and for lunch I had gyro tortilla wrap. 
my sister and her kids like eating raw sugar snack peas and it's actually so crunchy and delicious and for lunch dessert i had a really really moist chocolate cake which had two layers of mousse in the middle and brownies wedged inside then we went to some rich people's house that was turned into a museum after they passed away then i made some fun games for the kids while i nibbled on those trader joe's sweet for dinner they made a beyond meat a burger plate, in at least. Bun, roast potatoes broccoli and cauliflower those roast potatoes were really good. Then I had another cheeky little slice of that amazing cake before going to bed. Good night. Okay, what did you notice about her food choices? I'll give you a second to type it out. What did you notice? If you typed carbs on carbs on carbs, you would be correct. And that explains why she was constantly so peckish earlier on in the video. I noticed she started her morning off with waffles, some cake, reviewing some croissants, some Cadbury eggs, some caramel treats, lots of sugar, lots of refined grains with the breads and the cake. And that's why she was constantly eating more and more. Those carbohydrates don't do anything to calm her hunger down. And the high amount of processed sugar she's taking in tricks her brain into telling her, you need to eat more, you need to eat more, you need to eat more. And I don't have the total calories on this day, but she easily ate 2,500 to 3,000 calories because of the croissants, the cakes, the caramel, all those sugary treats together are why she ate a ton of calories, but had low food volume. She did have some bright spots. Uh, the wrap that she made had actual protein in it. The edamame that she had after that was very low in calorie, high in fiber, so I'm glad she had those two together. And her dinner plate, it did have a Beyond Meat alternative in terms of its protein source, and it did have a lot of vegetables around it. So that plate and the two snacks before it was about the best she did during the day. Before those meals and after was all carbs, high calorie, low volume foods that are especially high in processed sugar. So she's constantly eating more sugar than she realizes, lots of energy, low impact on her overall hunger. So if you find yourself eating similar, where you're starting your day with a bagel, with a croissant, with a muffin, and then you're doubling down after that with even more sugar, you are much like a hummingbird. You're like someone that is a sugar fiend without realizing it. And it is high time for you to look at all that processed sugar and find ways to eat more fruits and vegetables instead of all that processed sugar. Your brain is addicted to that sugar. You're like, ah, ah, I need more sugar. And you're not expressing it like that, but your brain is poking and prodding at you to get it like that. When you discontinue eating so much processed sugar, you get control over your hunger and appetite and you get control over your waistline and the scale. I'm not gonna keep picking on the women that post their what I eat in a day. Let's look at what a man eats in his office and he falls into the same traps as these ladies have been that I've shown. Hit the like button, let's go on to our third video. Let's kick off our final video of the compilation. I'm gonna showcase what this man eats for his day in the office. Again, as you watch, comment below what you observe he makes as his food choices, and also hit that like button. Let's give it a watch. I eat in a day. Office edition. We usually have plenty of breakfast options, so I went to the pantry for some cereal. And what do I find? Not cereal. So I turned around and I was like, okay, fine, I'll eat a banana. And then, jump scare. Bananas are already a sus-ass fruit, so when I look at them and they're brown like this, I just, I don't want it anymore. So I decided for breakfast I would have four Kit Kats. And to make up for all the sugar that I was That's eating, a terrible I was swap. just gonna not put sugar in my coffee. So I fill up my cup with some ice okay. and some cold water, and then I pick my espresso pod. Do, 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 do. I always pick the green one. I don't know why, I don't know what the difference is, but I like the green one. Regardless, I set up my cup and I make an iced Americano, which I take back to my desk with me with my four Kit Kats. Lunch came and I did order Naya today. I always feel like I have to defend myself when I order Naya. Like, it's really not that bad. I ordered four grape leaves, three of these little pies that have spinach inside of them. And then this was my lamb shawarma bowl. Right. I know it looks a little bit not that good, but it was good. And some bread. On Wednesdays, I have two o'clock meetings and that means it's time for a diet car. I get some lime juice, pour it directly into the car, and then I set up for my meeting. For my afternoon snack, I get these Hit Peas Chickpea Chips. Please enjoy this ASMR. And then I grab one last LaCroix from the fridge for my ride home. Pample mousse, of course. Bye, thanks.
All right, all right. What did you notice that this gentleman preferred to eat? I'll give you a three, two, one. Carbs on top of carbs on top of carbs. He started his day fiending for his carb favorite, cereal. And when you looked in that snack cabinet, all you saw was packaged chips and other packaged snacks that are high in carbs. Not much protein available. And he couldn't find his go-to cereal. He declined to have a piece of fruit, a little brown on a banana never hurt anybody. And he decides to make a terrible swap. Instead of having uh, some fruit, he has four pieces of candy. But thankfully, oh, I'm so glad to hear it, he's not gonna add any sugar to his espresso. Phew, he did himself a very, very small favor by doing that. But his hunger is still gonna be on overdrive because again, he's having a ton of sugar, no protein, and all that does is his brain is gonna be poking him. Hey, hey, eat some, eat some, hey, hey, eat some, eat some. Lunchtime comes around and he does make a good choice. That lamb shawarma was packed with protein. It had some lettuce and some onions on the side for vegetables. And the two appetizers he got were also vegetable based, but they're also very much carbohydrate based. So pretty much the only real protein source that he had throughout the day was the lamb shawarma. It's not a bad protein source, but not adequate because adults, both men, women, whatever you want to call yourself, need at least 100 grams of protein. And unless he's planning on having a very protein dense dinner, which I highly doubt, that's pretty much the majority of his protein is coming from that meal. And that's not even going to get him close to what he needs for his body to feel adequate control over his hunger or even to just give him lasting energy. In fact, he has a Diet Coke before his meetings, which is low calorie, which is no calorie, that's great. But again, because he's low on protein and constantly taking in sugar, his energy levels go up and down, up and down. So he needs a good amount of caffeine to keep himself going throughout the day. And he does decide to have more flavored sparkling water on his way out the door. No harm, no foul there, but I just bring up the fact that he over consumes on carbohydrates, under eats on protein, so his energy level, his appetite are not properly regulated. He doesn't look like he's carrying a ton of excess body mass, like he's not fat, but he probably is low on muscle and has a higher amount of body fat than he realizes. And being a skinny fat person is rather deadly because you don't see the scale being, being bad, but your body composition is bad. And if you're constantly taking in carbs with minimal amounts of protein, you're gonna put yourself in a situation where diabetes, hypertension, and other health issues are gonna creep up on you even though you're not looking at yourself as a fat, overweight person. Since we've gone through these videos, I have a few takeaways for you. First up, you need to start looking at what you're eating with an honest assessment. Simply take photos of everything you are eating and look at it and observe. Are you even eating at least two pieces of fruit and one vegetable in the day? Chances are you're not and that's the first place you can start adding in healthy foods without depriving yourself of the things you like. Second thing to look at, how much protein you're eating. We all have the ability to measure our protein very quickly by using the palm of our hand. We should be getting at least one palm-sized protein serving in every meal. And those of us that are bigger, especially us men, need at least a palm and a half for most of our meals. That protein is going to help control our hunger, gives us lasting energy, and helps us to maintain and slowly build some muscle so our metabolism stays in a faster pace. And then lastly, let's make sure we're not having way too much of our calories coming from our beverages. You saw in the last video that guy was drinking Diet Coke and LaCroix, two beverages that provide flavor, sweetness with no calories. I have no problem with those. It's really the other drinks that are high in sugar and therefore high in calories where we need to watch our portions. You start with those three changes to your eating habits, I assure you, you will see a very measurable difference within 30 days and beyond. All it takes are small changes done over enough time to have a very big and lasting impact on your overall health. Put your comments and questions below. Let's have a discussion on anything that you saw with people eating the standard American diet or what you observe with yourself on your own standard American diet. I'm here to help and answer your questions. I'm gonna be putting a link up to another video about secret eaters, which showcases some of the ways we are overeating without realizing it.
Give it a watch, and I'll see you on the next one.